in this tutorial we'll continue looking at the keyed particle systems because they're useful and powerful okay so what we have here is three individual particle systems and they're all keyed let's take a look at each one here's these violet colored one purple colored it's keyed and it's targeting this cube dot o2 which is this one here which also has a keyed particle system set up on it except you notice there's no keys set within this one because it's just receiving these particles and then the green one here has uh, it's also targeting the same thing and then the blue one down here is targeting the same so they're all pointing to the same location and so they're all following the path but if you look at the blue one it looks like it's heading there a little more directly let's actually let's get a little more light in the scene so I can get this over here so you can see that I'd put a general light in the scene, but I don't like general lights. They just, I don't know, they're kind of boring to me. All right, so its it looks like it's taking more of a direct path, whereas this purple one is kind of swooping around to get there, and this green one's doing the same kind of thing. Well, that's controlled because basically it's the time frame that it takes for all the particles to get there. And if we take a look at the blue one, let's see here notice I have the lifetime set at 50 whereas the purple one set at 179 and the green one is set at 109 alright so what the green one is at 109 and it's taking quite a ways to get there it's got to go all the way around because it's within that time interval that it has to get there the purple one was taking even a longer time interval so it's swooping all the way around and it's even is it further away yeah it's slightly further away in fact let's move it closer to the scene and see what happens it's actually closer to the object so it's going to have to twist all the way around to meet its target but you can notice if we just take this purple one and we cut down the lifetime on it then it has to reach its target in a shorter period of time so it goes more directly there just like that alright and if we go way out let's just crank it way out you can see it's gonna to have to find its way let's see it'll start all over again if we do, uh, we're probably gonna run out of particles yeah there's only 370 particles yeah so we're gonna to have to crank up the number of particles on this guy so he doesn't run out too high. oh no here's the problem down here I don't have the I don't have it set long enough down here All right, so then it's going to have to find its way to get all the way back there like that. All right, so then let's see where it's heading. That's just looping directly back. But you notice everything does if you just grab this guy and move it. They'll all track to it. So I moved him out of the scene like that. This, even here, notice that? Pretty powerful. So you can do a lot of great effects. So I've seen, definitely seen commercials on TV where they would have used particle systems similar to that. Who knows, maybe some of them have used Blender. It just very well may be, right? Like that. Okay, well I just wanted to point out that quick point because that's important. Um, I don't actually have a handle on exactly the path that it would take to get to the object. I can't say I know what would define that path, but if I run into if it, if it crosses my mind, I'll make another tutorial and let you know. Okay, well that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.